Hi, I'm Graham Priest and I'm an Australian philosopher and logician, um, though I currently work in the City University of New York. And this is the first of a number of short videos about logic. And in this particular video, I want to talk about what logic is, because I guess many people are not particularly clear about this, and so I want to explain that in this video. Now, it must be said that um, the word logic is thrown around in many ways. Uh, often, if I tell someone you're being illogical, that means nothing more than you're being unreasonable. But in philosophy, philosophers use the word in a much tighter sense, a much more precise sense. Even in philosophy, however, the word logic is used in many different ways, and you have to look carefully at what someone means when they're talking about logic. However, modern logicians understand uh, the word logic in a quite precise sense, and I want to explain to you what that is. First of all, logic is about reasoning, and uh, modern logic is an analysis of what is good reasoning. Now, you have to understand that in a certain sense. So, to explain that, let me give you a couple of examples. So, consider the following argument. Logicians use the word argument, not in the sense of um, a fight, but in the sense of giving reasons. So, an argument, sometimes called an inference, I give you reasons, these are sometimes called premises, for something or other, that's usually called a conclusion. So, inferences or arguments have premises and a conclusion. Now, consider the following argument. Rome's the capital of Italy, and this plane lands in Rome, so this plane lands in Italy. That's a pretty good argument, right? Because if the premises are true, well, they are, Rome's the capital of Italy, and this plane lands in Rome, let's suppose that's true, then indeed it will land in Italy. Okay, now compare that with the following argument. Toronto's the capital of the USA, hmm. and this plane lands in Toronto, so this plane lands in the USA. Now, how good an argument is that? Well, in one sense, it's a terrible argument, just because anyone who knows a little bit of geography knows that Toronto is not the capital of the USA, it's not even in the USA. So the premises of this argument, namely that Toronto is the capital of the USA, are just plain false. In that sense, it's not a very good argument. However, if the premise of this argument were true, the conclusion would indeed follow. So, in some hypothetical situation in which Toronto was the capital of the USA, and the plane was landing in Toronto, then the plane would be landing in the USA. So, I imagine a hypothetical scenario where, after the um, American Revolution, the USA invaded Canada, and uh, conquered, let's say, Ontario, the bit of Canada on the northeast side of the US border, and move its capital to Toronto, which is in Ontario. In this hypothetical situation, where Toronto is the capital of the USA, and if the plane is landing in Toronto, then we will be landing in the USA. So, um, in this hypothetical situation, where the premises are true, the conclusion will be true too. Now, this argument is still valid, okay? Logicians are not concerned with whether or not the premises of their arguments are true or false. That's someone else's business, the lawyer, the mathematician, the geographer. All that logicians are interested in is whether, if the premises are true, the conclusion will be true. And inferences or arguments of this kind are called valid. So the central concern of logic contemporary logic is what inferences are valid and why. Okay, so we're not interested in whether the premises of our arguments are true or false, we're just interested in whether the conclusion would follow, uh, or the conclusion does follow. So if the premises are true, the conclusion's true. Now, that's validity and that's the central core of contemporary logic. But um, you need to understand another distinction here. Let's consider some more arguments or inferences. This is the first. If the burglar had broken in through the window, there would have been footprints here. There are no footprints, so the burglar didn't break in through the window. 
that sounds like a pretty good inference, right? If the premises are true, if the burglar uh, had broken in through the window, there would have been footprints here, and there are no footprints here, well, then the burglar didn't break in through the window. That's fine. Compare that with the following. Dark clouds are gathering, so there will be rain. Now, the premises here actually provide a pretty good ground for the conclusion. When dark clouds gather, there usually is rain. But notice that even though the premises are true, it could just be that the conclusion isn't, because sometimes rain clouds gather and there's no rain because the wind blows the clouds away. So this is rather different from the burger example. So in the burger example, if the premises are true, the conclusion has got to be true. Whereas in this case, even though the premises provide a good ground for the conclusion, it's just possible they could be true and the conclusion false. So this gives us an important distinction uh, between inferences where the premises guarantee the conclusion, these are called deductively valid inferences, and inferences where the premises provide a good ground for the conclusion, although it could just turn out to be the case that the premises are true and the conclusion false. These are called inductive. And for good measure, just consider the following inference or argument. If the burglar had broken in through the window, there would have been footprints here, so there will be rain. Now, this is a hopeless argument by anybody's standards. It's a bad argument both deductively and inductively. So that is just a contrast with arguments which are good deductively and inductively. Now, both deductive validity and inductive validity have been studied throughout the history of Western philosophy. Um, it must be said that uh, more energy has been put into an analysis of deductive validity than inductive validity. That's because philosophers, by and large, have had close connections with things like mathematics, where deduction plays a central role, and with, say, law, where induction plays a more central role. However, um, both deductive validity and inductive validity, inductive validity have been examined extensively, and uh, I'm going to focus in, what the, in the other lectures on deductive validity. That's mainly because it's easier to get your head around and more work has been done in analysing it. Uh, there have been three great periods in the history of Western logic. The first was in ancient Greece with people like Aristotle. The second was in the great medieval European universities like Paris and Oxford. And the third great period starts around the beginning of the 20th century where mathematical techniques were applied to deductive validity to analyse it. And in those three great periods, uh, different theories of validity have been put forward by logicians uh, and in later lectures in uh, this series we will look at some of them. However, that's all for today. What I've told you in this lecture is that logic is about validity, that is about what follows from what. When premises of an argument really do give good ground for the conclusion of the argument, whether or not those premises are true, we're just interested in whether the conclusion follows. And uh, we'll look at this more closely in subsequent lectures.